Sky. Das Besondere sehen. Sky Nostalgie. This slab of slate, together with many others, was discovered by an archaeological expedition among the ruins of the ancient Carthaginian city of Bursa. It revealed an unknown chapter of the Punic Wars which were fought between Rome and Carthage two centuries before Christ. Hannibal, the great Carthaginian, exhausted after three years of struggle, sent his ships everywhere to plunder the supplies he needed to continue the bloody war against Rome. One of these ships, pushing north, approached the Celtic island of Penda and prepared to attack it. Its commander was Canus, chief of the Carthaginian fleet. We will lie here until covered by the darkness of night and then strike the island of Penda. The Celts are in for quite a surprise. Carthage needs their supplies. Feed the slaves, I shall be in my cabin. Lower sails! Why bring this filth into my quarters? This slave broke his chain and strangled a guard. What? Hot blood you have, you ignoble creature. Did you think to overcome my ship? What, have they already cut out your tongue? You'll never conquer the Celts, you Carthaginian swine! You speak well of these Celts. You must know this country. I am a Celt, captured in a raid on the island of the Cassarides. I hope they all fight as heartily as you, my stupid friend. It has been a month since my sword last tasted blood. Had I been fortunate enough to warn them of your arrival on the island of Penda, they would have killed you all. Well spoken. You have a good voice, you speak loud and clear, and your warning would have rung loud and clear. Had you been fortunate enough to swim ashore. This is Carthaginian wine. Heady and strong, it clears the throat and mellows the voice. But we have another, better Carthaginian drink that also helps the voice. Prepare the drink of gold. Is the gold yet ready? Fill the iron goblet.
I toast you, Celt. Drink deeply of the golden wine. Toss him overboard. This was the island of Penda, which slept peacefully and felt sufficiently secure behind the protection of its gigantic cliffs and the power of Rome. Governed wisely by an old king and his two sons, the Celtic tribe of Penda lived according to the ancient tradition of its people by hunting and animal grazing. Peace had reigned for many years on the island, and life flowed serenely. Only a weak echo of the ferocious war between Rome and Carthage reached these shores. The rarest news brought by a passing ship. Peace and labor had, as always, generated abundance. Someone had decided that the best way to employ the fruits of peace was to wage war. This someone was Carthage.
Dog, no Celt bows to a plunderer. Silence! Let me speak, my son. Speak then, before I slaughter them. Is there more to your attack than mere pillage? Carthage is at war with Rome. I have come to make a treaty. Death rather than servitude! Hold your tongue, or by the god Murdoch, you shall have your wish. For myself, I ask nothing, but I beg mercy for my son and daughter, and for the people of my island. You will agree to a ransom. All your support for two years, in return for the lives of your people. I... I do so agree. We shall also take your hot-tempered offspring as hostages, should you think of betraying us. A curse word is bond enough. Only a fool buys the word of a barbarian. You leave me little. Little? Their lives and their safe return, should you fulfill your promise and supply the needs of our guards. We shall leave a garrison to protect you and this island. How long will my son and daughter be held? Two years. Then you can have back your litter. Take them away. Look after your sister, my son. I promise that you'll keep your peace. Rest easy, my father. As long as these devils keep our trust, we shall buy our time until we get the day. of the work, the warmth of the metal. Who would think these cold-blooded Celts could produce such? I'll wager that old king's daughter has fire in her blood. I'm of a mind to become acquainted with its warmth. <laughs> Best dull your thoughts with more wine, Commander. She's a king's daughter, a royal hostage we hold in trust. And I am a noble of Carthage. Fetch her here, along with that scowling brother of hers. I'll observe the amenities and ask his permission. What of Hannibal? Hannibal? You know his orders in these matters. Hannibal will be years throwing himself against the walls of Rome. And I rule Carthage in his absence. Fetch the barbarian wench at once. Please, Rubik, you must resign yourself. To pace up and down like a caged animal? Two years under the heels of these decadent Carthaginians. It is little enough sacrifice for our people. For myself, whatever might happen means nothing. But you, 
You are young, a girl. I fear nothing. I have you, brother. Canis summons you both. For what reason? The wish is upon him. It is better to listen and obey. <laughs> it is for you to grovel. You who wear his insignia. Come, Creota. Peatbog Princess, doesn't our form of gaiety meet with your approval? You summoned us. Perhaps you will oblige. Did your kingly father teach you to dance and to entertain men? You ignoble pig. We are hostages, not slaves. Aboard my ship on an ocean conquered by Carthage, you dare flap your tongue at me? Or do you wish it removed? Ah. No, no! Please, brother, please! I'm not afraid of a calf who must be primed with wine before he has the insides of a bull. You oh, bind him to the mast. Let go! Dance. Be time for this fair-skinned wildcat. Stand back so that I can observe her artistry. Now entertain us, princess, before I entertain you. Dance better without your claws, little tigress. Dance now, I'll place your brother's head at your feet. Start the drum. Princess, we shall dance alone. Rather than a stain upon our house. Goodbye, brother. He'd have been a dribbling nuisance anyway. Put him at the oars. Carthage, always a welcome sight. A few days rest, Commander. Not until we inspect the rest of the fleet of the Pillars of Melkart. We'll exchange these worn-out galley slaves for a fresh group and sail immediately. Make ready to put into the quay.
first crew comes aboard within the hour, Your Excellency. Make sure they are prime. Move! Well! Well! Still alive and kicking, eh? I thought the voyage might have calmed your princely exuberance. Canis, let's let him finish me now, as I swear that someday I shall strangle you in your own blood. Silence, you! No, a noble statement. Let him plan upon it and savor it for a while. In that event, he must die slowly. I know your ability in such matters is that. Just see that his mind remains clear to the last. It shall be done, Commander. Would I return in time to hear your last screams for mercy? Take him away. Decoration for you. Your necklace of nobility. Now we shall acquaint you with your privileges. to me. At once, Highness. What slave is this? A barbarian couch, Your Highness. And like a wild animal, he needs taming. Your struggle pleased me. My household needs bravery. I fear he does not understand the custom, Highness. Kiss the foot of the Princess Dorotha! Son of Pender kisses the foot of no woman. Least of all, that of a Carthaginian cat. You know. <laughs> So, your stubbornness interests me, barbarian. It should be tested by something worth its metal. Take him to the household compound, have him shaved and fed and otherwise refreshed. I'll then advise you as to his further disposition. Go. Till then, barbarian.
Come with me. Well, was the fruitless brawl worth it? No man with pride need answer that. Perhaps you can answer better when you find out what the Princess Taratha has in mind for you. Nothing could be more ignoble than to be lashed to death by a slovenly pig. <laughs> by all my Greek gods, how I agree with you. Greek? You are not Carthaginian then? Oh, heaven forbid the thought. My men and I are mercenaries from Sparta. Oh, yes. Now, get it. I have heard tell of men who... who sell their swords. Better than to find myself in your position. Sockets, eh? I have never seen such a fortress. The greatest state of Itable, the heart of Carthage. No Roman legion shall ever pierce its walls. And it needs these strong walls to guard the hatred and the evil that wallows within them. You bear arms for such people. We'll be done with your noble chi, you doomed lout. I'll be well rid of you. Come on, up, up. What manner of monster is that? An elephant. Hannibal brought 100 of them from his conquest at the eastern rim of the world. They are with him now in his assault on Rome. And Keep them steady now. The most destructive machines of war ever devised. But yet of flesh and bone. Oh, tons of it. He steps on you, you become pomegranate jelly. Well, my old Roman renegade, still insolent in your trusted position? Young Captain Lycurses seems out of temper. Is it perhaps because he and his mercenaries haven't been paid yet? Oh, we need none of your pity, old clown. Though perhaps this fellow does. Uh, what large lump of carrion have you brought me now? At least he has courage. He defied obeisance to the Princess Taratha herself. She wishes him shaved, refreshed and fed. For what's our end, I cannot guess. But knowing that you claim no slave has spirit, I uh, brought him to you for the task. To defy the Princess Taratha is spirit only from here. Real courage comes from the belly. And I'll prove to you that he has none. Fetch me that stick. He is a slave too. Does he command me? In his position, yes. Already his spine turns to water. I told you so. to make your head into a large wet coin with a face on both sides. If that is my destiny. You've run against a stone wall, Varro. Aye, and a staunch one. I should discover what lies beyond it. I leave you to your sport.
next we shall clean the surface. Come. You've had your meal enough. It was a temptation. To your palate now, I wish to talk. Till the morrow, sirs. <laughs> Where does the boy come from? Eh? Oh, Babu. He came with the elephants from the Eastern Rim. <laughs> the merry one. For a slave. That's the only thing he knows. But he's quick as a hummingbird. He could steal the eyes out of an eel. A useful lad for the future, perhaps. What future? Why do you think I tried to make you grovel today? I am at a loss. I had heard Romans upheld dignity and justice. I thought perhaps the disgrace of your captivity had affected your mind. And reduced me to the evil and cruelty of our captors? No. Never shall Valo Aurelius, once captain of the Roman Legion, ever forget that he was born of the greatness that is Rome. But I am in disgrace, yes. But I am no longer a Roman citizen, I admit. Why? But... Are you not still a Roman as I am still a Celt and a son of Panda? No. There was a battle to the north. My legion, among others, faced the advanced armies of Hannibal. Though we were outnumbered nearly five to one, we held for a while. By Mars, how my men fought. To the death they fought. But I had the disgrace to be disarmed and captured. Disgrace? When you fought as well as you could? In her hour of trial, Rome, injustice must be severe. Bah. Those of us that were captured were deprived of our citizenship. We can regain it only by escaping and returning to accept the penalty that goes with it. Our death. Surely you have no wish to return. It's the only wish left me. Because even though I die, once again, I'll be a Roman citizen. The most cherished thing I know. I, I sit with a man. Beyond your freedom, is there nothing that you cherish, my friend? Two things. The liberation of my father and my country through the defeat of Carthage. And the other? The chance to face Canis, commander of the fleet. Him I must destroy. If free, you're sworn to that. On the soul of my dead sister. I, too, sit with a man. You shall escape with me. But take more than ourselves. But there are more, nearly three score, in the estate and compounds. And we have a very valuable ally. Who? Oh. You're with us then. To my last breath, but the ally. I have that honor. <sighs> well, he's passed the test like curses. And what's more, I see the qualities of leadership in him. Well, never mind that yet. He has still to pass another test. For tomorrow night, the princess has made arrangement with the master of the games. He is set to fight Belias to a finish. I fight who? Belias is the gladiator. He's broken the backs of his last 20 opponents. <laughs> and you talk to me of freedom. The dream might be short-lived. That is true, Rivak. So first, it must remain to be seen whether or not, after tomorrow night, you are still alive. Ha, ha, ha.
at the thought of it. The Lyasis will surely kill him. He is proud, and within him is a tremendous fire burning for freedom. As it burns in all of us, shall we ever see Rome again? Oh, come, Valeria. The daughter of Antonio Octavius possesses more spirit than that. I long for Rome and my family, but each day it grows farther and farther. Faces grow dim. If it weren't for you and the hopes you hold, I think I would die. You are young, Valeria. But I promise you, as I promise myself, that our time will come. And each day my hopes grow stronger. And I have a feeling that the Celt might be our answer. Our answer? In a few moments he may be lying in a pool of his own blood, dead, on the floor. You've seen men die before. Too many. The weak who die we're perhaps not meant to be with us. If the Celt dies, we must not lose heart. He must not die. Ah, such determination. Once again, you speak like a Roman noble. Is that an order to the gods? I've never seen a man who made me feel like this. I've told myself I'm being foolish, but everywhere I look and everything I see reminds me of him. Vera, I cannot lose him. Now that I've found him. Pray hear me. Your Highness, Excellencies, with your permission, the choicest moment of the evening. Belias as the gladiator will need in mortal combat a slave chosen worthy of his prowess. Princess, permit me to wager a thousand arbole on Belias's in your name. He is ten to one favorite. Then I wager you a thousand to ten thousand. I choose the sleeve. Surely you jest. Do you wish to honor my wager? I would contribute to your entertainment, your highness, 
But I fear you must surely lose. You have heard my wager. One thousand to ten. Done, Your Highness. You will fight to the end, with no quarter given or asked. The signal to commence will be a nod from the Princess Tirada. He has done in the champion. I gave him no chance at all. You're right now looking at more men than you shall ever know. Captain. Your wish, princess. Have the barbarian made presentable and brought to my quarters at midnight. As you desire, princess. is one step closer. Follow me. Halt! The Princess Taratha has committed the slave to my care. I will take him to her. You may leave. I saw you win over Belias's tonight. I hope you were entertained. My heart was with you in every moment. Oh, true Carthaginian sentiments. Carthaginian? I am a Roman and a friend of Varro's. Varro is no friend of mine. He's nothing but an elephant trainer. Go back, listen. There is little time. I know your dream is the same as ours. Dreams. Everything is dreams here. Is there no time for doing things? Of course there is a time. But our opportunity must not be spent foolishly. When we strike, it must be swift and sure, or we will all be dead. How long have you been waiting? Two years. Two years of servitude, bowing and scraping and always remembering that the right time would come, when the right man could lead us. Why suddenly does everyone look to me as the right Wait. man? I looked to you the first moment I saw you on the waterfront. I've never met a man who... What is it? I'm sorry to have shown such weakness. Look, I don't understand. You must not keep her waiting. Pharaoh holds much hope in you. And 
do. As a Roman, I must never let hope die. Perhaps our time will be soon. Rivak, Carthage is no longer unbearable now that you are here. There. Come closer, barbarian. My name is Rivak, Prince of Penda. Very well. Then I shall know you as such. Leave me. Would you come closer? Rivak. Did you know why you fought tonight? I fought simply to stay alive. Well said. And that is why I arranged it, Rivek. At least to save you from the quarry pit. From then on, you were on your own. And you proved my faith. How mightily you proved it. Then for the chance to live, at least, I am beholden to you. I expect no payment of tribute. Other than what you might wish to give. Freely. And that I might wish... to return in kind. Come. I would be pleased if you were... more comfortable. Your pets don't seem to agree. Stupid creatures in their loyalty. Their jealousy is flattering, though. They were afraid you were going to touch me. Was that your intention, Rivek? To put your hands upon me? Now that we are alone, Say what you will. Or am I too repulsive to touch? My barbarian. Is this the pulse of hatred I feel? Or is it one of still greater victory within your grasp? A man would be made of stone. You are truly a barbarian. Who put that thing away? I must practice. Well? He is still within her compartments. Maybe he defied her again and she had him drawn and quartered. No, then I or one of my men would have been notified. We'd have had news of the body. Aye, perhaps she's making him show her again how he killed the gladiator. And watching his movements. Like a cat. Shut up, you young raghead. I'm off to bed with you. Oh, I know, right? No! Oh, ah. <laughs> and now let's say what's in our minds, my friend. The blood runs strong in that Celt. And after what he's been through, who could blame him? But what if he succumbs to her and takes the easy life she might offer from now on? Then where do we stand? When he shall die. Before he has a chance to betray us. Look at me, Rivak. Tell me. Tell me in words this time that you have never met a woman such as I. You have told it that simply. Oh, no. More as a man. In death for every breath within my body.
I will never give you time to think of that. Because I, in turn, shall be your slave. I am chained in your embrace. Look! Look, you wear this circlet with my insignia. So that you can enter and leave the palace at will. No one will dare question you. And what formal duties would you assign me? Keeper of your perfumes? No. Tender of your incense pots? By Malak, take care! Are you... Are you not content to be keeper of my heart's flame? It may consume even you. Strange at this hour. I left orders. Who calls? A messenger from His Excellency, Your Highness. Bid him stay. I must receive this messenger now. And, and for the moment, we must be discreet, my love. Wait! Wait in the shadows until I'm rid of him. Well? I've written hard and long by special order, Your Highness. From whom? From Canis, your noble brother. The fleet has won a great victory over the Romans at the Pillars of Melkart. His ship will arrive ahead of the others on the second morning's tide. Loaded with vast treasure. He wishes you to arrange a fitting celebration for the following day. Canis. Again, triumphant. I shall declare a holiday to end all. You may leave. But here, Canis, your brother. Yes. Yes, he's clever. But most demanding in his public festivities. But you wear my circlet now, and I'll be waiting for you tomorrow after nightfall. Wouldn't it be more discreet if better, if it, if it were more private? A uh, uh, secret entrance, perhaps? My barbarian. A shy one. <laughs> here, I'll show you how to come to me. Through here, you may always enter and lead, so that no one will see you. This is our secret. When you wish to enter, pull this. Wonder upon wonders. Through this passage, you may enter from the terrace. And where does this other passage lead? Hannibal himself designed Idibal. Should Carthage ever be attacked by land, which is now beyond the realm of thought, this passage leads down to the water's edge. Near the quay? Yes, directly to it, so that the royal family might escape by sea. But it is not escape I think of now. Until tomorrow, my love. I'm held here by dreams I never knew. 
end will await their fulfillment. Always. Too bad. <laughs> uh, Roman luck. <laughs> well, we wondered if we'd ever see you again. Ah, I see you wear the princess's insignia. A gift or something appropriated as a souvenir. Or perhaps a decoration for prowess. <laughs> I'll take none of your plaguing. I am no boy, no beardless one with round eyes. And the Princess Taratha, no matter how much you might condemn me, is soft. And firm and rich to the senses. A lovely woman to be embraced. I would be a fool to deny it. I, uh... I gather there was no threat of torture. Of what need? And what is your station now? The highest, the most favored possible. Then your life here could be one of comfort and ease. No more living and being treated like an animal. For as long as I wish. It's difficult to turn one's head from such a future. Mm. She is the sister of Canis. The vilest dog ever given life and whom I have sworn to destroy. Just as all Carthage must be destroyed when we have regained our freedom and reached our homelands to help rally them for the common struggle. If it means her life too then. And Tarapa's fate is in the laps of her gods. Well spoken. If we bide our time, our forces gathered, have patience, then the time will patience. come. Patience! There is no need for it. The time is now. What? Now? Are you bewitched after all? Listen to me. Canis returns tomorrow on the morning, second tide from the pillars of Melkart. His ship will dock alone on the quay. We must strike before he sees me and learns of my... My new station, or the time will be never. And listen carefully, there is a way it can be done. Look. Look, I will show you. The key. Ship. Here. Back. I thought you were asleep. Sleep? My mind tumbles with thoughts of tomorrow. Once again I hear the cry of battle in my blood, and I wish for the strength of a hundred men. Is that not true of all men before they face the enemy? The doubts, the weighing is of one's shortcomings? Surely a career such as yours must have experienced this many times. Man. Yes. But what keeps you awake, my friend? Why are you not asleep? Are you, too, imagining tomorrow in your mind? Who is Valeria? What a fool I am. I'd envisioned you plotting sword thrusts and cutting down Carthaginians. But romantic games are living in your head. Who is she? The daughter of a Roman noble, my oldest friend. She possesses great spirit. And great beauty. Surely that did not escape your eyes. That thought need not worry you. There are other thoughts that plague me. War comes from the hand that holds the sword, not from the heart. 
Tomorrow can only happen once. One moment of weakness, one man's hesitation could condemn us all to Don't failure. speak in shadows, Barrow. Say what is on your mind. Taratha. What of Taratha? You denounced her. Yet you do not sleep. My restlessness need not disturb your slumber, my friend. I have told you what I feel, and I know clearly what my duty is. But you paced the compound for three turns of the hourglass. What troubles you, Rebecca? The insanity of it all. That by a twist of fate, Carthage should be my enemy. And that Tiratha should stand for Carthage. That we are all so built. That because one's blood represents a country or a heritage, we must ally ourselves with our sworn pledges and hate. Even though they themselves are not responsible for being born what they are. When Pharaoh will men become of age and not have to hate and destroy only because of a place of birth or because they bear the name of Roman or Carthaginian or, yes, Celt. Noble words, my friend. But for the future, perhaps. Tomorrow, in a matter of hours, is part of the present. Good night, Rebecca. in your debt. But we are not yet away from Carthage. Go. Oh. Rivak, no matter what happens, I'll always be grateful that I've met a man like you. You will meet a lot of men. And one day it will be the right one. There is something I must say to you now, Rivak, lest I never get the chance to say it again. From the moment I saw you, I became a woman. And no matter what happens to me now, I shall always be happy for it. Valeria. No heart in Carthage or in Rome could beat more proudly than mine does now for the faith you have in me. I will show you Rome, Rivac. My father will give you men to return to Penda and free your country. He'll give you a legion, tall and straight and strong. Oh. Oh, that I could show you Penda. Unlike this part of the world, it is rich with huge trees. Its rocky coast feels the pounding of the surf. Its air is crisp and cool. And my people sing. I hope one day you will ask me to see it with you, Rivak. You must go now to the end of the passageway. Go! You're here. I have been here in thought all day, Your Highness. A new facet in my jewel. You have a touch with words as well. Leave it. I have a little time before Cato's ship arrives. And I would spend it only with you.
detachment is this? A change of guard for the festivities tonight. Princess Tarathas orders. Open the gates. I receive no word of any such change, Captain Lycursus. Dare you challenge me? Open, I say. Open the gates. Thank you. 
power thou! Rebeck, she must die. It is for me to do. She is the sister of Canis. I will join you on the key. Quickly then. I should have known not to trust a burglar. Carthage must be destroyed. Try to destroy me first. Now, I beg of you, kill me. Since I was foolish enough to love you, let us complete the mockery. Mockery is that I can never forget you, nor shall I ever wish to try. Let the memory stay clear and sweet to Rafa. There are few enough in this world. for this glorious hour. Throw out those lines. Easy there, easy now. Ah, uh, to finally step ashore, my go. To the delights I have promised myself. Wait here until it's safe. Where is Ribak? There he comes now. Look well, my friend, our ship of freedom. We must first command the key. Then at my signal, we rush the vessel. Quietly now. Come. Board, you'll free the poor wretches at the oars. To open the Loxis Giles blade. My sword is beginning to breathe again. No one may touch Cadus. He is pledged to me. Take cover. The barge! Over here!
exotic dog, not you. Yes, Canis? You wished to return in time to hear my last screams, didn't you? That I should so dirty this blade. Set 